The word Aborigine literally means from the beginning, and the Aborigines of Australia have lived as hunter-gatherers on this island continent since prehistoric times. When Europeans arrived, there were around three quarters of a million Aborigines living in many different tribal groups, with numerous unique languages. Now a quarter of a million, some 2% of the Australian population remain. They mostly live in the outback north and west of the country. The ancestors of the Aborigines arrived around 50,000 years ago across a land bridge from Southeast Asia. When the British arrived just 200 years ago, they declared Australia terra nullius, a no man's land free for them to colonize. Aboriginal languages and practices were banned, mission schools were set up, and many children thought to be of mixed race were removed from their parents. This practice carried on as recently as the 1960s. How are you today? The concept of terra nullius was finally overturned in 1992 and native title land rights recognised. However, many Aboriginal families still live in poverty. Unemployment and alcoholism is rife. Some now choose to leave urban Australia and return to tribal lands to live the life they love and understand. When Aborigines find a stingless bee, they attach a thread to it so that they can follow it back to the hive and enjoy the honey. After hunting an emu for meat, even the sinew is saved and used to make more hunting spears. In coastal waters, stingrays may be found. In billabongs, long-necked turtles are steam-cooked in their shells. Special knowledge is needed to find and kill water pythons in the northern swamps. In the arid deserts, the Aborigines have learned where to find hidden water. Before yams can be eaten, a dilly bag has to be fashioned from the roots of a strangler fig tree. Then the starchy yams can be soaked to remove the toxins overnight. They're ready for eating come breakfast time. Mangrove worms can be eaten as soon as they are found, although to western eyes they look about as appealing as the famous witchetty grubs, fat moth caterpillars found in roots. But children love them. For dessert, sweet honeypot ants. According to Aboriginal law, in the beginning there was nothing. Then came song, and the world was sung into being. During this dream time, creatures roamed the earth and shaped it. The parenti lizard laid its eggs and they became boulders. The rainbow python slithered along and made a meandering river. Vibrant symbolic art keeps the dream time alive today. Elaborate song lines are memorized by the elders. These songs tell stories which describe the country, allowing for navigation in this apparent wilderness. And so the whole landscape is full of meaning and many places are sacred. The elders are also responsible for teaching the children and passing on Aboriginal law. Nowadays, some are converted to Christianity. The heavens are as high above the earth. But many now revive ancient beliefs. During these gatherings or corroborees, stories are told and rites of passage celebrated. Once again, the elders are free to teach the children the ancient ways and keep their culture and bond with the land alive.